Uh, Rod and I first bonded over Taylor Swift, and since then I've been so impressed with his character and with his ability to engage any audience, anytime. Give it up for Brad Rodin. Thank you. So imagine this. Your heart rate starts pounding through the ceiling. Your hands go sweaty, and you're feeling lightheaded. I'm not talking about the symptoms of a heart attack. I'm talking about Bradley Rindo's sophomore year when I was interviewing to be an emergency medical technician with the Chatham Emergency Squad. This was something that I had really wanted, and something you should know about me is that I'm the kind of person who loves to help other people. I'll hold the door for you no matter how far away you are and watch you do that little jog to get to the door in time. But I've always loved helping other people. I grew up as a Cub Scout, and now I'm an Eagle Scout. I grew up admiring aviation, with pictures of planes across my bedroom walls, and now I'll be joining the United States Air Force after college. I grew up admiring first responders, and now I'm one of six senior EMTs on the Chatham Emergency Squad. So when I was finally selected, I was very relieved, and there was a lot of work that went involved with the training process, 200 hours of summer school, dealing with things from learning how to deal with car crashes and deliver babies, even drug overdoses. And then finally, when all of that's done, you take this 200 hour class, you still need to take a state exam, you still need to shadow a nurse for 30 hours in a hospital, and then, oh boy, and then the state of New Jersey gives you this. It's a paper card that I laminated myself with masking tape, or with uh, packing tape there, and in the end, it didn't matter. It didn't matter to me that this was a paper card because it meant that I had my pager on my side, turned on and ready to go. It meant that I had my purple latex gloves ready for blood, mucus, or whatever other bodily fluids there were going to be. And I was ready to respond to any emergency that came my way. Or so I thought. But before we talk about that, I have these two terms on the board here, servant and leader. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your hand if you'd rather be a servant in this world. Raise your hand if you'd rather be a leader. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people. Now, isn't that interesting? I'd like to counter that thought. I'd like to suggest that in order to be a, a leader, and in order to be a good leader, these are actually one and the same. I'd like to think about the concept of servant leadership. That in order to be an effective leader, you are actually doing your people a service. In order to be a good leader, you need to recognize the needs of others and put those needs above yourself. A servant leader is one that's attentive to the well-being of their followers, and in this way, they can lead those followers more effectively. So of course I wanted to you know, be a leader and add this to my college applications, but in the end I wanted to be an EMT to lead the way to serve other people. So this past summer I had the great opportunity to be a member of the Beach Haven First Aid Squad, which is pretty neat because my friend and I got this very nice beach house to ourselves, uh, with the one little caveat that we had to respond to 911 calls as they came our way. Uh, so we didn't really get to decide what was on our to-do list. Beach Haven, for anyone who doesn't know, is the vacation hotspot of Long Beach Island. It's where you have mini golf courses and amusement park rides, and where people love to spend their summer vacation. My friend and I volunteer down there because in the summer months, when the, all the vacationers come in, they really need the extra help, the extra hand. Um, when a call comes in for 911, it's sent to a dispatcher behind a screen of, uh, behind a series of television and computer screens, and then they relay the message to either police, fire, or EMS. When EMS is selected, this is what it looks like from our end. So I was, really, I was really excited to go on that call because it was one of my friend's first 911 dispatches and the, the, the call wasn't that severe, the patient was going to be fine. That story changes when one fateful August day we get this. Squad 14, this is Ocean County, respond to 22 year old male, not conscious, not breathing, CPR in progress. And that's basically the worst thing that you can hear. That means somewhere in the area that we are responsible for, there is someone that has their life in the line. And within hours, 
they will be dead forever, or they'll be allowed to see another day. My friend and I run into the basement of this building. We hop in the ambulance. My fingers are fumbling across the GPS to put this address in, and his hands are flying across, triggering sirens, opening the garage door, and we go screaming out of the bay. When we arrive on the scene, it's a beachside hotel. There's a pool in front, and what had happened is one of the 22-year-old laundry workers, he was a student from China, he couldn't speak English, and he didn't read the no diving sign. He dove head first, causing his forehead to cave in, causing brain damage, causing him to lose consciousness, causing him to drown. A lifeguard had gotten him out of the pool and started CPR, but he wasn't breathing sufficiently. In any situation, you need to be able to understand what success looks like. As I hopped out of the ambulance with my friend by my side and we're grabbing equipment and we're running over to this person surrounded by lifeguards and police officers, I looked down at this man and realized that my friend and I were responsible for whether this person would live or die. And I knew at that moment there was nothing I wanted more than for him to take another breath and see another day. I visualized what this meant to me. As a matter of fact, if you look at any sort of organization, even Chatham High School, they have something called a vision statement. And a vision is what success looks like, what it's outlined as. Chatham High School's vision is to meet the social, emotional, academic, and special interest needs of our students. And I'm sure that you guys have seen this in some ways. I'm sure that you've seen Ms. McCabe do a great job to teach this class or one of your other school experiences to carry out this vision of what success looks like at Chatham High School. Visualization is a very powerful tool. If I ask you guys to visualize a beach, go ahead, close your eyes, close your eyes. What do you picture? Without me saying anything, you can open your eyes. You probably pictured the sand in your toes, the heat of the sun, the ocean breeze, something like this. But if I ask you to visualize success, what does that look like? We each have a different thing that comes to mind when we think of success. Maybe it's your dream job, or going to the college you really want to go to. For me, it's doing well in a TED Talk right now. But we each have these different ideas of success, and they can change at any time. Visualization is such a powerful tool that Muhammad Ali kept telling himself, I will be the greatest, I will be the greatest, until eventually he was. Even in basketball, they say that you can improve your three shot percentage by 25% simply by visualizing the shot before you take it. So let's go back to the story. I'm looking down at this man, and I want nothing more for him to live another day. My friend uses this device on the left here, the suction device to suck blood, vomit, and other bodily fluids out of his airway. Meanwhile, I'm using a bag valve mask to force oxygen into the patient's lungs. We take the patient off the concrete floor and onto a stretcher, and we bring him into our ambulance bed taking blood pressures and pulse rates and other bodily measurements. The next step of this story is dedication. Dedication meant memorizing a 1,200 page textbook years before this moment ever happened so that I was prepared in any situation. Dedication meant knowing these skills like the back of my hand so that I could perform them in any amount of stressful situations. Dedication means the 40% rule. The United States military has a special operations group known as Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs are highly regarded for being able to go through any sort of situation and do it effectively. One common mantra that the Navy SEALs have is this 40% rule. They say that when you think you are done with something, you are really only 40% done with it. And the reason why this is so important is because as we're doing all these stressful things on a hot 90 degree day, and you have pedestrians and people looking out of their hotel rooms watching your every move, you feel like you're done. You feel like you want to quit and give up and not do that next impression. However, you're really only 40% done. After we had done our measurements, after we had done as much as we could as EMTs, we realized that we needed to bring in some additional help. We called a team of paramedics, which are more advanced EMTs that can administer other drugs and needles and other intra-body intra um, intervention techniques. And they eventually recommended that we needed to call in a medical helicopter to bring this person to a more advanced 
uh, hospital. We were going to take them to a hospital just off the, the island of the causeway, um, but that facility wasn't equipped to handle these needs. So lo and behold, we call on a helicopter, we take the patient out of our ambulance into the helicopter, and away they go. We expect to never see them again, and we would never know what would happen. That is what we expected. A couple days later, we got a call from the captain, and we found out that our patient had lived. Not only that, our patient was expected to get full mental and physical functions back, despite the brain trauma that they had. And lastly, because the patient was an exchange worker from China, his parents were given temporary visas to come and visit him in the hospital. There's a lot of pictures in this world that I adore, but nothing is more important to me than this one. This is my friend and I on a fateful August day as our patient is taken away from us in a medevac helicopter. So we've talked about visualization. We've talked about dedication. There's one more step, and that's celebration. You can't do these things without having a reason to keep going. You need to applaud yourselves for, what's done well, for what you've done well and celebrate your success. So of course, we have a difficult job, and it's only possible because we love doing it. A lot of people say in this world that when you're successful, you'll be happy. When you're successful, you'll be happy. You know, if you make a lot of money, yeah, sure. You'll have a nice house and a nice car, and you'll go to work every day and be happy. That's not the case. Success does not lead to happiness. Instead, I'd like to suggest that happiness leads to success. I don't think that I would have been able to do a good job that day if I wasn't happy serving the needs of others. So sure, we have these ideas. Visualization, dedication, celebration. Let's all say that. Visualization, <laughs> dedication, <laughs> celebration. And sure, those things lead to success, but I have a few other ideas for you. You need to be flexible. You need to understand that you might not always determine what's on your to-do list for today. You need to be empathetic. Be thankful to, for, to first responders, and to everyone for that matter. You may have no idea what someone else is going through. Understand that perception is everything. Life is not what happens to you, but how you interpret it. It's 90% your emotions and your reaction to whatever it is you're experiencing. Understand gratitude. You all woke up this morning, and not everyone has that pleasure. Understand that service, above all else, is the most important thing we can do. Service to others is the rent you pay for your space here on Earth. So while visualization, dedication, and celebration might lead you to success, I'd like to leave you with one more thought, and that is that service will lead you to happiness.